I am filming this at a completely different time of day than I normally film and the lighting is throwing me off. <laughs> hey guys, my name is Haley, and today we're going to be filming a queer horror recommendations. This is a genre that I have like accidentally fallen into and by accidentally I mean I read a lot of queer books in general so it's not that accidental. But I seem to have read a lot of them at once, and now I have many to recommend to you. <laughs> I'm also really trying to beef up all of the recommendation videos because I think they're really fun. They're really easy to film. And especially when it comes to horror, I read a lot of it in general. So it's way easier for me to group those together by, like, tropes. <laughs> but the first one I'm going to jump right on into is We Came to Welcome You by Vincent Torado. This is a basically really weird HOA. <laughs> it's about this queer couple, women loving women couple, that move into this new little area. It's like a developing neighborhood and there's like this really weird strict HOA. They come and like try to introduce themselves and they're like, oh you can sign the HOA agreement. And they're like, no I don't really want to do that. And the people are appalled at the concept of somebody not wanting to join an HOA and it seems that there is something sinister and creepy and strange going on with these people who are in charge of the HOA as well as there is something going on in their house that does not seem normal. This book deals a lot with racism. There, it, This is a dark-skinned woman in a relationship with, I believe she's Korean, and there's a lot of racism involving them because a lot of the people they moved in next to are white. They're also some of the few queer people in the neighborhood. It's a whole exploration on all of those topics. Also, one of our main characters has a lot of religious trauma from her family. So that's a big conversation in here. And I loved this. This is probably going to be one of my favorite books of the year. And I gave this five stars. So I highly, highly recommend if you have not gotten to this one. Which is likely because it's a newer release. Next up is The Spirit Bears Its Teeth by Andrew Joseph White. I've talked, I feel like, at length about this book, but I'll talk about it again. This is about a trans boy in the 1800s who is sent to a sanatorium because his parents want him to just marry a man and, like, live as a woman. And he's like, I can't do that. So he gets sent to a sanatorium, and it seems that there is some sort of veil sickness going on in the sanatorium. And... He's trying to navigate Victorian, like, I don't know if it's London or just England in general. The Victorian area era <laughs> being trans, which was not an easy thing to do, but there's also a lot of strange paranormal things going on at this sanatorium that he is sent to. And I love Andrew Joseph White. I annotated the crap out of this and I have loved everything that he has written. And I'm really excited to read his new book that just came out. But I highly recommend this one, especially if you love paranormal. As someone who doesn't read a lot of historical fiction and really doesn't like historical fiction most of the time, I love this. So I feel like that's saying something. My next recommendation is also one I feel like I haven't shut up about since I read it. And that is Barrier Gaze by Chuck Tingle. This is about a Hollywood writer for like TV shows and movies. Mostly, He's mostly a horror writer. And... He goes into the office one day and his boss tells him that he needs to either kill off his main characters or they can't be queer and he has to make a decision on what he wants to do with those characters. And as he is making this decision, it seems that he is being haunted by some of his own horror characters that he has created over the years and he can't figure out. At first he thinks it's people in cosplay who are like trying to get to him from corporate to get him to like decide to kill off his characters and then it gets more and more sinister as the story goes along and there might be a bit of a sci-fi twist to this i love this the sense of humor is great in this even if you're not a big horror fan i don't think this is like that scary necessarily but even if you're not a big horror fan i feel like this is a good read especially if you're interested in getting into horror highly recommend this one Next up, I have another favorite of the year, and that is The Invocations by Crystal Sutherland. This is a story about three girls. One girl has had her sister pass away in the last year, and she wants to raise her from the dead. Another girl is from a rich, affluent family and has been, like, sequestered off to this own house by herself, and the family just tries to pretend like she doesn't exist, and she definitely has some sort of magical curse that is eating away at her body. And our third girl grew up kind of wild and like has been sneaking into places she's homeless and she does a form of witchcraft in which 
the way you get powers is you get a tattoo on your skin and that is how you gain witchy abilities. And the three of these girls team up when it seems there is someone or something hunting down people who have the invocations or the scripts or the tattoos on their arms of witchy power and is collecting these tattoos one by one. I will also say the queer relationships in this are so fun. I love them so much. They were so interesting. Next up, we have an oldie that I feel like I used to talk about all the time, and that is The Luminous Dead by Caitlin Starling. This is about a girl who kind of lies her way to get this excavating job where she has to go underground to, like, I think it's to retrieve something. It's like an underground expedition. And she's, like, mapping this underground tunnel especially, but the kick to this is she is constantly on comms with another woman back at headquarters and slowly as she is descending into the ground and she is on calm with this other woman who is like meant to keep her alive and tell her what to do and everything the two of them fall in love but also this is a horror so keep that in mind but yes this is a women loving women story as well another recommendation i have that i've literally never heard anyone talk about is all tomorrow's photos by ss genesi i believe is the author and this is the story of a serial killer who likes to photograph his victims and keep them as like souvenirs as he is killing them because he thinks it is a work of art and he's like a photography student at a university and he meets another boy and he start the two of them start to fall in love and it is him constantly deciding whether or not he wants to tell his partner what he does and <laughs> hope that he doesn't leave him or just keep it a secret and the suspense of this little duology was so good i loved it so much i love that this was a like newish take on the serial killer like romance genre of it being two males especially like two contemporary males at a university i really enjoyed this duology and highly recommend it next up we have a short little novella and that is the patient routine by luna ray hall this is the story of a non-binary character who has a lot of what I, I don't know if it's ever said in there, but a lot of symptoms of OCD involving their body. If you don't like body horror or you're like really disturbed by OCD symptoms in that way, probably skip this one. They are convinced something is wrong with them. They are going to go for a checkup with their normal doctor at this hospital. And while they are there, the hospital goes on lockdown and a bunch of creepy weird stuff starts happening this book is also told in verse it's only like a hundred some pages i want to say it's i believe it's under 200 and i really really enjoyed it for how short it was i really enjoyed the story next up i have this delicious death by kayla cottingham this is a story about a couple of years ago there was a virus that went all over the world that was essentially a zombie virus and it was known as the hollowing and people that got it ended up consuming human flesh. A lot of people were killed because there was no way to control it at that time. And the way they solved this issue instead of killing all of their zombies because so many people had it was that scientists ended up creating this like synthetic human flesh. And as long as the people who had the disease continue to eat it the way you would eat any other meat they don't go into a frenzy or go feral anymore. It is like a way to keep them docile and keep them completely no living a normal human life. Despite the fact that they occasionally will have cravings and there are certain things depending on the person that can trigger it. And this is about this group of girls who go into, they're going to a concert out in the desert to see this like boy band. And they like take their synthetic flesh and everything with them. But on their first night there, something happens and one of the, the boy band members is killed and everything takes off from there. I also just really loved the queer relationships in this. I believe one of the characters was trans as well, which was a nice little addition to this. I really thought this was fascinating and such an interesting take on like the zombie thing that we've done seen done so many times. I felt like this was a very unique take on zombies. And then next I have Brainworms by Allison Rumfit. I read this, I want to say it was the beginning of last month. And this was a weird little book it was strange this is about this woman who in her workplace there's this like online hatred which is very reminiscent of real life going on of this transphobic person comes around and bombs her workplace and like the main character's frankie's life like falls apart 
And she's going around like sleeping her way through everything, trying to cope with all of this and all of the trans hate online. And then she ends up meeting this character named Vanya. The two of them strike up a relationship. It's a very toxic relationship, in my opinion. But my favorite part about this book was literally just the commentary on transphobia, which, as we all know, is very in the media right now. But also, if you don't like body horror or gore, don't read this. Because it was, there were some scenes, I listened to this on audio, and there were certain things the narrator would say, and I would be like, I never needed to hear that in my entire life. This also has a really weird, like, dream-like almost quality to it. I don't know how else to explain it, but I really enjoyed this and do recommend it if you're interested in queer horror. But yes, that is my short, sweet little video about recommendations for queer horror. I hope you all enjoyed this. If you did, please leave a little mushroom comment or mushroom emoji in the comments down below. Thank you all for watching, and I will see all of you guys next time.